Gavita, we're live. Yay. Hello, everyone. How are you? Let's see. Uh, so I'm still adjusting a bit here. And I want to say hello and welcome. This is my weekly Monday broadcast uh, on a Tuesday. And I want to thank you, Davida, for being flexible with me uh, because I couldn't broadcast yesterday. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Of course. I am I'm super excited about you. I'm so glad when I met you and then when I talked to you and I learned more <laughs> about what you do. I'm really excited to learn from you and I really want the community in the classroom to learn from you and the whole world to learn from you. And we're gonna do that today. So before uh, Davida and I dig into this, I just wanna say hello to everyone and thank you for being here. Please take a moment and tell us in the comments where you're from and uh, if you're currently a member of Amy Carrier's classroom, and why you might be joining us today. Now, um, you will see me looking at my phone because that's where I can actually see the comments and keep up with them. Otherwise, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, but I just wanna make sure that we give it a couple minutes to let our audience build. So everyone, let's chat. Where are you from? Who's watching today? Let's see, let me take a look. Let me see. I mean, am I live? Are you guys seeing me? Can you see me and Davida? Looking, looking. Okay, we've got some people. That's great. Let me look at the comments. Oh, Nasser, how are you? Oh my gosh, I love Nasser. I think Nas is it Nasser or Nasir? I can't remember if you if I ever learned. Um, Nasir, you're gonna love Davida, you just are. Nasir is one of our, just from the beginning, class members. He loves everything we teach. He's always present, he's a funny guy. So Davida, you'll get to know the people in the classroom and the community, and it's a lot of fun to build those, those connections. Hello, I'm Jenna and Arthi. What's that, Davida? I'm looking forward to know these people. Good. Are you guys looking forward to meeting your newest mentor teacher today and learning from her in the future? If so, say yes in the comments. And let me look through here. So Jenna's here, hello. Soyel Ahmad, hello, welcome. Fawad Khan, hello. Uh, let's see, Cynthia Reynolds is watching from Norway. I, Davida, do you know Cynthia? Yeah, and of course we just chat this morning, say hi going to see each other in the evening so wonderful that's, awesome. to see you. <laughs> that's wonderful oh cynthia i am just i'm so glad i'm meeting this incredible community of people who are so forward thinking and so open-minded and davida you're part of that <laughs> and i'm just i i mean i love cynthia i had the most amazing conversation with cynthia that for me in my mind and for those of you who are watching take note this is why you have to expand your network and your community. I talked with Cynthia for about an hour and she gave me so many ideas and inspired me in so many ways. And that's how we're gonna build the future. And that's part of what uh, Davida is gonna be talking about and working on helping you guys to learn while she's here in the classroom. So let me just take another couple of minutes and say thank you to everybody who's here and um, please take a moment to share this video and introduce yourself in the comments. And I am Amy Carrier. Uh, for those of you who know me, um, I am Amy Carrier, uh, or I'm, I'm Amy, yes, I am still Amy Carrier. Uh, I'm the founder of Amy Carrier's Classroom, which is just a, a free open classroom here on Facebook. Uh, where I find the most incredible people from around the world to come in and just teach what they know to a, to the world, to a bigger audience. And I'm really grateful to add Davida to our community of mentor teachers today. And um, so if you do not know who I am and you're not already a member of Amy Carrier's Classroom, please go join today. Uh, it's a group on Facebook. So you can either go uh, facebook.com slash groups slash Amy Carrier's Classroom, 
or I made it really, really easy. I bought the URL, just go to amycarriersclassroom.com. It'll take you right to the group on Facebook. And um, let me just look really quickly. Okay, I got some yeses. Arthi sent a hard face, that's good. Uh, Bernard Kikra Jr. Magum says, hello, De uh, hello, Davida. I'm glad to watch you right away from Uganda. Uh, and he shared a link. Looks like he works on focusing with youth. Uganda Focus Youth is the name of the link that he put. So um, Arthi says she's absolutely looking forward to hearing about another precious soul. Aw. <laughs> That's so Arthi nice. is amazing, Davida. You will get to know her. She's she's just incredible. She helps me so much. She helps so many people so much. And she broadcasted on Saturday on her birthday talking about, um, oh my God, you, it's very hard to sum up what she talks about because she's so motivational. She's so inspirational. And Arthi, I'm not even going to like disrespect your broadcast by summarizing it, <laughs> but you can actually, Arthi, you can put a link to it in the comments here so other people can watch. So everybody's excited about this. It's great. All right. Saman Sarish, glad you're here. Stephen Putter uh, is here and I'm sure we've got some other people watching. So let me now begin and say thank you so much, uh, Davida, for being here. I'm so happy to have you. And I wanna just do a really quick introduction of who you are to me at this point, um, why I asked you to be here, and then you can tell us why you actually said yes and what you're doing in the world. Sounds good. Sounds good? Okay, good. So uh, Davida, I found through SOCAP. And someone make sure you're sharing this video in SOCAP Network because this SOCAP, that's, this is one of the uh, success stories of that amazing community. Um, I saw something that she posted and it really inspired me. Uh, I can't remember, Davida. I've seen several of the things that you posted now. I don't know what the first one was. Yeah, I'm not sure either. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Davida writes uh, amazing articles that she publishes on Medium, and she shared those. I've seen those. And the, the thing that caught my eye is that she, she is focused on social impact, and specifically this really important little piece of social impact, social innovation, and that is helping people to avoid burnout. And... To me, I mean, I've, I've been doing this classroom for a year now. I don't make any money. Nobody doing it makes any money. We just do it because it's something that we care about. And I encourage people to be part of it because it's a way you can digitally volunteer and digitally have an impact on the world. Um, and it's, it's been tough because I felt burned out a couple of times. So I'm looking forward to learning from Davida because I want to learn how do you avoid burnout? I'm not that great at it. Um, and she's also, I learned uh, recently, she's certified in nonviolent communication, which I think is incredible, incredible. Uh, so I hope you can talk about that as well. And uh, Davida lives in Israel, so our mentor teacher team is expanding to one more country, and I'm very, very happy to have her broadcasting from Israel, and hopefully we can all learn more about Israel and what life is like there while we get to know Davida. So Davida, thank you for being here. Thank you for saying yes to my crazy online volunteering, you know, virtual classroom experiment. And I would love for you to tell the audience who you are and why it is that you've decided to join us. Okay, with pleasure. So thank you for having um, me for this conversation and for the warm welcome. Uh, I'm a little You're black. welcome. <laughs> of course. Um, let's see. Uh, if I need to tell a short bit about myself, then yes, I'm headed in Israel. Uh, where else? grew up and still living here, uh, although I also lived and studied abroad in Sweden. Oh. Yeah. That's, How many uh, people so do we have here from Sweden? 
we have Alex, who I think you know, Davida. Do you know him? Uh, briefly from online. Okay. okay. Uh, probably a few from Scandinavia. Yeah. And so uh, I live in a community uh, in the northern part of Israel, uh, very close to the border with Lebanon. And I don't know if you can see some of the view here, but in the community library, so uh, brighted windows, summertime. And by profession, I was first a journalist because I really like to write and tell stories. Uh, but in some point, I realized I like to write about social issues and I really to make, wanted to make, um, let's say, a leap to step to the other side and instead of just writing on social issues, to actually take an action and do something about it. This is a, how I got to study uh, leadership and sustainability in Sweden. And when I came back to Israel, I founded uh, a center which called Be the Change. And what I'm really passionate about is also the reason for the name Be the Change is to help people to support people to cultivate their leadership capacities to mobilize social change. Because for me, leadership and leaders in general are not the people sitting in high positions out there far away. For me, leadership is is the strength that each of us as change makers has and can train and develop um, to, to do everything that he feels should be done in society, in communities, in his own family and surroundings. And this is also the reason why I got training in nonviolent communication. Um, because for me, it's a better way of living and communicate with my children, with my uh, husband, with my friends. So I'm trying to live by that. Not always successful, uh, but uh, I have this path ahead of me. Um, yeah, so what we do in the center is that we, as I said, support different types and different levels of leaders, help them to, um, to see the vision of their project, uh, to make it alive, to make it a more strategic project, uh, process, sorry a more strategic process uh, towards this social change because we all have such wonderful ideas and intentions, but how can we make it reality? So we work with them step by step and trying to um, crystallize what really is the essence and what do they really want to do. Uh, we work with frameworks to help them distinct intentions. We work on communications. I'm very passionate about communications and how we can make sustainability messages more positive and more value-driven rather than negative and frightening. Because whenever I see a headline in the media and the news that's really frightening people and expecting them to take action, I feel this is really the wrong way. Uh, I feel that no one will step forward to take an action if he's now that from the results. Uh, so we're trying to take the other way. Um, and this is a very uh, general overview of the things I'm passionate about. Uh, and you want to hear the story about burnout, I guess. How did I got I, to the burnout? Yes, I do. I want to <laughs> hear about burnout. And I want to make sure that we give people uh, a yes, way please. to connect to be the change as well. So okay. yeah, tell us, tell us about the burnout piece. The burnout piece. Uh, this is quite new uh, for me to work on preventing burnout. When I say new, I mean uh, around 18 months, I think, a little less than two years. Um, happiness that I had uh, a conversation with a friend and a colleague, um, and we talked about some of our colleagues that, you know, change makers, social leaders, that work on such wonderful things to help society um, and to promote social well-being. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, they don't take care of themselves and uh, they don't maintain self-well-being, personal well-being. Uh, so while they're taking care of others, they are depleted and lacking the energy um, and really suffer sometimes from tiredness and frustration. And then it becomes stress, and then it could develop to burnout. And so following that conversation, I decided, well, maybe I can write an article about that, something around why the people working towards sustainability fail to sustain themselves. And when I started to dive deep into that research, 
I realize it's so common. This is such a wide phenomenon. Change makers getting burnt out. And it's all over the world. And it's cross-cultural, cross-sectoral. So I got to interview, pe interview people from all over the world. And then mentors and experts in different fields that I felt I had a hunch what could help to avoid burnout. Mm -hmm. And that the entire project became a book. Uh, so the process is not done yet. The book, the book is not published yet, awaiting publication. Uh, but it was and it still is a very important journey for me, uh, not only to realize uh, what causes burnout among change makers, but also how can we prevent it in advance? How can we maintain self well being while we're working to pursue social change? Yes. I love that. I just put a question on screen. Uh, how do we avoid burnout? But I, and I'll leave it up for just another second, but you just said, how do we prevent burnout? So I think that's the more important question. Yes. So your, your book uh, is called? Burning Out Won't Get You There. Burning Out Won't Get You won't There. Get you that is so true. <laughs> Uh, as one who's been burned out a couple times, mm. it's very, very true, and it's almost like um, it's almost like a habit because those of us who want to make you know broad impact and make social change, we're so dedicated to it, and it, it's hard because you know uh, if you're balancing with a family or you're balancing this kind of work with your day job. You know, you're doing it outside of the full-time obligations you already have. So, Davida, what is the answer? How how do we avoid burnout if they're only 24 hours in the day? Yeah. What do we do? Um, so the answer is very broad. I'll try to touch some key points. And I love the fact that you brought up habit, uh, because if we are burned out by habit, then we need to break down the habit, uh, break the circle, and embrace a new habit. And this is why I talk a lot about, and write a lot <laughs> about, um, about integrating daily practices. So it's not just we are now going on a retreat, which is wonderful, but it will not help us next time to prevent the burnout. So the only way is to change our routines, our habits, our daily practices. So what can we do practically? Um, again, different solutions. Uh, we can start by something very broad, which is about a more positive mindset. And it relates to what I spoke before about the messages. Mm -hmm. so it's not about, we have problems, global problems, and we're now going to tackle everything because then we got really frustrated. Mm -hmm. It's a more positive way of thinking of, I can make a small change and that will add up to more changes that of other people doing and what I will be doing in the future. And I'm not and expecting to see immediate results. So I gain more patience um, and I'm waiting for the results to show up in the future, even if the next generation will see that. Mm -hmm. But to be a little more practical, so starting with contemplative practices, which is a big word to say that we need to learn uh, to take care of ourselves in ways of either pausing and uh, be still sometimes and do stuff like meditation and yoga. But at the same time, at the same time, we can also dance and party and release our energies. And it sounds like what is the connection even between going dancing in the evening and working towards social change? But there is a very, very strong connection. Because if we know that we gain this energy every evening or almost every evening by different types of activities, even if it's yoga, meditation, walking, doing sports, dancing, singing, hanging out with friends, then we know that our life is not only around pursuing social change, it's so much wider than that. And it really helps. It really Absolutely. provides us with the energy, the oxygen that we need, basically. Yes. I love that. I love that. You talked about the mindfulness. 
you talked about the, the personal care, the yoga, the meditation, and I put up on screen yoga, meditation, and fun, because I think that's the part that I failed to incorporate. I didn't see fun and joy as a priority in my own life to help feed me. I do now, and you know, I'm not, I'm not great at it yet, but. I try to remind myself and come back to that. So you talked about dancing. You talked about having fun. Um, what other types of things would you say that people need to do? Yeah. Other types of things. Uh, I want to talk about uh, connections. And that breaks down to communities and tribes. Yes. Yeah. To first, like the soak up. Uh, to personal connections and to mentorships. And let me say just a few words about each. So the community and tribes is that once we are a part of something bigger than us, but we hang out with like-minded people, then we know we are not alone. We know even if we're doing our part, we are part of something bigger. We are within this network. Um, I talk on a weekly basis with so many of my colleagues, even if we don't have an ongoing project because I want to tell them about what I do and get their support and feedback or just, yeah, that's it <laughs> sometimes and hear about theirs and try to share advice or again, just cheer up from the sideline. It's really important to feel um, this circle uh, that surround us and know that we're just simply not alone. In that system. Right. I love that. All of these things that you're talking about, you could you could do an entire lesson on each one individually. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, yeah. And it's it's important also to know we can again break it down even further how to build strong uh, connections, how to build trust and maintain it. It's you know it gets so wider than that. But just this is just the key highlights. Yes. And stepping from that to personal connections, personal friendships, because again, I can sit and have coffee with my friends and not even talking about work, but just to know um, that I'm connected to someone else and that we share empathy. You know, when we sometimes forget to put empathy on the table, we talk about business, uh, we talk about marketing, financing, goals, vision, but empathy is such a core ingredient in life professional and personal life. So if I know I have my friends, uh, the personal connection, this is part of, again, being part of something bigger than me. And it really drives me to do my own job. Yeah. Um, and lastly is mentorship. And, and it really fits well, right? We talk about mentorship in this classroom. So uh, yeah, when I, when I first started doing my job on social change, um, I kept approaching partners, colleagues, and I didn't think I can actually seek from mentors. It took me a long time to realize that, and I, I still feel a little shy to do it, but I think I'm getting better at it. Sometimes I even, you know, approach people I don't even know through the social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, and I say, hey, I just read your article. Can we have a chat and can we talk about it? And it becomes yeah. a relation. And one of the mentors that I interviewed for this book, um, she shared a, a great piece of advice with me. She mentors a lot of people in the Boston area around climate and um, social change. And, say, and she said, we love mentors, love people coming to us and say, thank you for your work. Can you share advice with me? So they, it's, you know, it goes both ways. Yes, yes exactly. You know, the, the, when you brought up mentorship, this was the first thing that came to mind. And I was actually going to say something, but you kind of touched upon it. And that is that, um, you know, first of all, we all need to be learning, always learning. Even when you're a teacher, you need to be a student. So um, the, the only way you do that uh, in adult life, if you're not going to school or formally taking classes, is by seeking out mentors you want to learn from. And the thing that you touched on that I'm so glad you said, and I want everyone watching this to hear it, is that you can't just take and take and take and take and take from your teachers or from your mentors. You have to give something in return. 
And that, Davida, is part of my burnout because I let people, especially in the past, have let, I have let people in the past take and take and take or tell me, you know, they need so many things from me. They need so much of my time. And it wasn't necessarily that I, I wasn't willing to share my time. It's that people developed a habit and maybe it was partly my responsibility um, or, or I helped to create that that they just kept asking and asking and asking. And number one, you know, what I would tell people who did this is you have to make sure your relationships are reciprocal. And like you just said, just a simple thank you. And as a, as a teacher myself, it's true. Like I will work for an entire school year to get to the end of the year to have the most amazing conversation with my student. And it's like, it paid me a million dollars for all of the work that I did because I got feedback, I feel validated in what I did. So, you know, it's, it's important for those of you watching, it's okay to seek out resources and mentors, but make sure you're giving them something in return. And we don't have time to talk about that now. But um, for those of us who are the givers, we really also need to learn to say no, because <laughs> you can't help everyone. That's something, Davida, you might learn uh, when you join the classroom and we all work together to make the community bigger, there are a lot of people here and everybody wants just five minutes of your time. Well, that's mm -hmm. number one, not realistic, a five minute conversation. Number two, you just, you can't do that to everybody who asks. So, um, you know, I, I want to say uh, that so many of the things that you were talking about and that I put up on screen, I'm excited to watch mm -hmm your broadcast because I'm going to learn. And um, so many of the things you're talking about are the same components that I'm trying to build into education. And um, teaching these lessons around how, because I, I don't know what the education uh, situation, you know, education system is like in Israel, but in my country, teachers are burned out. They're burned out two months into the school year. And it's not sustainable because what's happening is that teacher turnover is so rapid because they get burned out. Um, you know, it used to be that teachers would teach for an entire career. And now the average teacher teaches only five years and then they just go on to a different, a different field of work. So um, I, I'm glad that you're talking about these things and I'm going to continue to learn from you as well. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, I think over there, yes, I, I'm guessing there is burnout uh, within the education system. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with the way society puts a monetary value, a low monetary value on this type of um, of job. So, you know, it brings up the question why people working in high tech get paid four times, I think five times uh, you know more than than educators and social workers and so on so it's part of that yeah yeah absolutely it's a big issue it's a huge issue it's a huge yeah. issue one of the things that i've been um, that the parts and pieces that you've been talking about fit into my work um i've been talking for years about building what i call uncommon collaboratives Hmm. Uh, and that's actually a term that I didn't come up with. Uh, in, in the course of my doing this without really having a name for it, I used to just call them partnerships for schools. Um, one of the gentlemen that I met who believed in my work so much uh, was a founding vice president from Staples Corporate, the international uh, company headquarters. And he and I continued to work together in a couple of different situations. And he said, Amy, this is, we were talking about bringing in all sorts of different people. And he said, yeah, this is the uncommon collaborative. This is when a group of people who you don't expect will come together, will come together because they believe in one cause. Yeah. Now, you know, if it's all educators, we expect them to be there. If it's all social innovators, we expect them to be there. But what about the people we don't expect to be there? Those are the people that I have always been focused on in education. And it's part of the reason, Davida, 
that I have even built this virtual classroom because I want to create a virtual uncommon collaborative. Hmm. And, you know, so right now, adding you to this community, here we go. You are focused on social impact, um, the, the nonviolent communication, the personal care side of it. Um, you're in Israel, and then we have Alex Portland in Sweden, who's focused on cryptocurrency, and we have yeah. Julia in LA, who's focused on entrepreneurship for teens. So it's uncommon collaboratives that get to exactly the last point of yours that I put up on the screen, which was um, being part of something bigger than yourself. Mm. And interestingly, it just touched upon another cause to burnout and then the solution. Um, we live in a culture of competition. Um, I see this around me. I'm guessing it's the same uh, in the US. I, I read about it. And we are educated to achieve success through grades and, you know, curve bill. And we are measured by our, you know, grades and positions and status and so on. So we adopt these competitions also to the field of social change and you get really stressed. Are we doing enough? Are we doing enough in compared to others? Are we ahead of this and that? And But this entire atmosphere of, of competition, not only is not getting us uh, ahead of anyone, it really um, drain us down and this one us there again. So instead, like you said, adopting different types of collaborations instead of competitions and understand that the pie is big enough and the collaboration towards social change in all fields, but in social change specifically, the collaboration is really the expression of the sum bigger than its parts. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the future. I think that I hope, so. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm committed to build. And I will spend the rest of my my career and my life just doing that, bringing people together, building solutions, building peace. And yeah, I, I really do believe that. Um, I'll, I'll tell you all just a tiny story. Uh, when I started teaching entrepreneurship inside of school, I started teaching in 2006. Um, one of the expectations is that you know my my student teams would all come together and compete i didn't like it but i wasn't really in the position where i could say yeah let's just this idea of the competition let's just get rid of it so 2006 7 8 9 10 it just kept happening and it bothered me and i wanted to figure out how inside education where everything is still ranked and graded and you know someone's going to win how can we teach entrepreneurship? And I was very successful in actually helping my students on their own come to the concept of doing something for social good. So about 85 to 90% of all of my entrepreneurship groups uh, over the course of the six years that I taught this, they all are 85 to 90% of them each year developed social organizations, social impact, social change. And I was so proud of that. And then it kind of took the pressure off of doing the whole competition at the end. But it's it's bothered me and we now have this huge culture of, you know, there are challenges, there are, um, you know, you can compete to win a million dollar investment in your business idea. And I just think, you know, that's the old way. It's not working together. It's just the old way where someone loses. And instead of looking at this whole group of people and saying, oh, wow, you know, we have actually four groups who would be fabulous if they started working together. Yeah. You know? I can confidently say that we don't have to step on each other in order to make things done, right? To yes. make a progress. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, Davida, do you want to say anything else? I know you have a you have to hop off in ten minutes, but I want to actually look through the comments and ask the audience if you have questions. Go ahead and put them in the comments right now. Uh, if you've got questions for Davida or on this topic of social innovation, social good, um, positive change, self care, <laughs> avoiding burnout, all of those types of things, let's talk about that. Um, and 
Davida, uh, so I've asked you to come into the classroom and broadcast when you're able. Um, and what we found works best, and I'm not putting you on the spot, so you don't have to come up with something. Okay. What we found has, uh, works best so that people can develop their community and their following and, and the people who want to learn from them, they broadcast at the same time each week. It's um, perfectly fine if you can't actually broadcast every single, you know, Tuesday at three o'clock. That's fine. Um, just let the community know. I'll be back, you know, this Tuesday at three o'clock. Um, so uh, I, I just want those of you watching, if you're not members of the classroom, this is how the classroom works. And Davida is one of now we have 15. Uh, mentor teachers in the classroom. Davida is the first of five new ones in our second cohort who are coming in. They'll be going through training over the next couple of weeks. Um, it, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for you to get to know Davida today and then also follow her on Facebook um, and be part of what it is she's doing and how she's building change. So if you have questions for her today, please ask in the comments. Um, I just saw a comment from Arthi who says, Davida, you rock, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I actually can't see the comments. So if you want to. Yeah, I'll put, them, I'll put them on screen, the ones that we uh, that we actually go through. Absolutely. So what are questions? Yeah. So, oh. <laughs> Here, I'm putting uh, Arthi's comment. We don't have to step on each other to get ahead in life. Yes, Arthi, that's so true. I hold it. Yeah, so I'm scrolling through looking for your questions. Unfortunately, I don't know why. Um, Elive makes it such a tiny window that I can actually see comments. Uh, so if you have a question or a comment for Davida, please put it, even if you've already written it, put it in the comments again so that I can see it, because all I can see is three at a time. That's it. So scrolling down, it's tricky to find them. So please do list your, uh, list your questions, list your comments. I love Arthi. She's always saying amazing things. So that's her other comment here. Have to have balance in life. Give as much as you take, absolutely. And uh, Margarita here gives you a thumbs up, just so you know. Um, Afridi says, love you. He already loves what you're teaching about and talking about. Can I say something short about uh, last uh, the last comment? Is it was actually proven that to give away to volunteer for example your time your resources whatever it is actually contributes highly to your well-being so even not it is about helping other people but there is a very strong beneficial side that you actually feel happier and more balanced and more creative when you give time you actually feel you have more time this was scientifically proved this is amazing i think Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. That's really incredible. Well, I, I, I can kind of see how that's in the vein of what I've realized is the more active I am, the more energy I have. The less active I am, the less energy I have. So you know, yeah, it also makes a lot of, of a lot of sense. Uh, mm -hmm. But something also emotional here because well-being is. Uh, Arts, right? And when you are happier and you feel that you give value to other people, uh, yeah. you're more ful fulfilled. So yeah. your well being is enhanced. Mm -hmm. So Margarita says it's very hard to have a positive mindset. Do you have a little tip you can give to Margarita for? I want to say about that one. Um, I totally hear you. Um, and a lot of people, of course, working towards change, towards social change when they um, meet all these challenges. So it's easy to feel overwhelmed and so challenged and, and it's hard to stay positive. However, when you recognize uh, what is bringing you down, what is your cause for burnout? Uh, 
from from a list of I just mentioned a few. You don't have work life balance, or you're so committed that you um, feel personally frustrated when you don't see outcomes, even though it's so big. You know, climate change. Who can solve it? Uh, or um, you feel that you're not doing enough, or uh, you don't have system support. So as soon as you identify what is your cause of burnout, then you tackle the very specific one. You consult with your friends, with your mentors, with your tribes. Um, you pause, you journal, you, you, you think, and then it's easier to fix the very, very specific problem and to embrace a more positive mindset. It's very short. I hope it's helpful. I, I hope you will do a lesson on that alone. Because, oh. thank you, because mindset is so important in everything we do. It's so important in success. And it's, it's. I mean, it's even hard for me. I meditated this morning because I had something in my mind. I just couldn't get it out of my mind. And I knew that it wasn't helping me. And, you know, so how we change our mindset, I think absolutely everyone here could benefit from. Um, uh, this gentleman is asking, where are you from? She's from Israel. Do you want to say anything more about that, Davida? I'm from Israel. <laughs> what can so I say? If you, if you missed the beginning, she introduced, she said she's from the northern part of Israel. Yeah. And uh, Mushtaq Naz says it's all about balance and relation. I think he's saying relationships. Yes, absolutely. Let me scroll back up to the top here. It is, it is. Okay, uh, Arthi has another phenomenal comment here. Um, see, they move so fast. All right, I'm clicking on Ifran Khan Said. <laughs> That's very good. All right, that's the latest comment. He's happy <laughs> about this. Uh, Ifran, do you want to leave another comment or ask a question for Davida? In the meantime, Davida, I'm gonna put up Arthi's comment and it's long, so it is gonna cover your face in it <laughs> um that she says the more you have the more you give meaningfully it grows your self-confidence your self-esteem and self-love that's true when you are taken advantage of you feel negative and you'll resist giving that leads to burnout what do you say yeah and it really connects to what you said at the beginning and give and take and it's also related to building trust when you build and maintain trust in relationship, any kind of relationship, and you have transparency and good communication, even if it's you know within work, then it's so much different, right? Because you have this trust and you know you're not taking advantage. Um, right. Transparently communicate your needs and you hear the other person needs. This is where it ties back to nonviolent communication to communicate our needs what we feel, what we need, um, and we do it in a very healthy manner, a healthy communication, then it changes the picture, right? So this person is not, not taking advantage of me. He needs, I don't know, uh, my time, my advice, something. Um, he tells that to me and I can choose if I wanna say yes, no, or let me see how can I um, meet your need in a way that is not harmful but actually has value for the both of us yes that's so true and i love i love both of these components that you just said building trust in your relationships uh and a big key piece of that or maybe the seed of that is actually honesty telling the truth and i yeah. and you know, i don't know if you'll talk about this but as women um, mm -hmm. Certainly here in my culture, uh, we've been taught to people, so it's kind of unlearning behavior that we learn from our mothers and our grandmothers and, you know, you're not, I think this is also part of nonviolent communication, the, the piece where you be honest, because when you're not honest, when you're not saying what your needs are, you're actually expressing a form of the violent communication on yourself because you're harming yourself by doing more than you actually can. Yeah, I think so too. I actually experienced that too uh, several times. 
and still, you know, in the learning process. If it all sounds so easy and simple, I really have to say it's not. Uh, we are all growing here and learning here and trying and experimenting. And I myself and many of my colleagues, we have setbacks, right? We have breakdowns. And, you know, it, we wouldn't be humans if we didn't have them. Uh, just to say, we're on the same page, right? Yes. It's just a way of how do we maintain a better lifestyle, work routines, a way to, you know, do meaningful stuff and be happy alongside. Yes. I love that. Do meaningful stuff and be happy. That's Davida's tagline for today. <laughs> so. That's that's wonderful. So I put Arthi's comment up on screen. She said she just became your number one. <laughs> She's just saying. Thank and you then so much. there's another one with some specifics about why she's your fan. She says that you are eloquent, beautifully spoken, structured, and powerful. We are keeping you. <laughs> Keeper, thank you so much. You know, now I feel elevated and empowered. So thank you for that. Oh, good. Good. So uh, I want to recap, just I want to put on screen what your, your tagline was. Uh, do, what did you say? Do good work and be happy? I think I said do meaningful stuff and, and be happy or stay happy. You can choose. Yes. I love it. I'm putting it up here so that it stays in the video. Do meaningful stuff and be happy. So Davida, um, this tagline right here when you have the inspiration and you feel like you've got a real short little proverb you can put up on screen, just post it in the classroom. As one of the mentor teachers, you're delivering a message to our entire community. And, um, you know, any, any short post that you want to share, any upliftment, anything, just post it anytime. You, you'll have um, permissions to do all of that. And I love it. Do meaningful stuff and be happy. People, that kind of summarizes like life. I think life would be wonderful if we all worked, lived by those rules. Um, and uh, I'll put up one more comment because I know Davida needs to go, but this is from Julia Neiman, uh, who is one of the other mentor teachers. Hey, so she's saying, great call. Welcome to the classroom, Davida. And that's a great way to close down our conversation today. So I want to say to Davida, thank you so much for your time today. And thank you for being part of our classroom, our community. Do you want to say any uh, short final word to those uh, people who are watching? I just want to say I'm grateful. I'm always happy to have a conversation even or especially if people are not agreeing with me, that's okay, let's have a dialogue. Uh, let's talk about it. So I'm happy to be part of the classroom and learn from you. Uh, and you know, just have fun, be happy. I think it summarizes it. Yes, exactly. And you know, this is, this is what we're all building together. So I look forward to building it with you. And I put up one more comment on the screen. Uh, Irfan Khan Memon said, nice to meet you. So people are already getting to know you and enjoying, he says, love your way that you talk and discuss them. So I have a feeling you're going to have uh, quite a following here and people are going to want your upliftment. I mean, I'm, I'm loving talking to you. I love your energy. I love the way you're just so clear and concise and honest. Um, in a way that's very soft and approachable. So thank you. Thank you for just being you. And thank you for being here and uh, for being part of what we're building. And everyone watching, thank you. Oh, you've got so many great comments. All right, I'm putting a couple more up on screen. So there is Irfan's comment. Um, and here is Payush. Oh, Payush, I remember you from last week. He says, nice to listen to you. Thank you. So I think um, I think this is a very good thing for everybody. And to those of you watching, thank you for being here. And as I said, you can follow Davida. And I actually encourage you to follow her. Um, 
uh, you know, make sure you click that see first when you follow her in your feed because she posts really incredible articles that I encourage you all to read. And now I'm inviting her to post her articles and share her writing and her insights in the classroom as well. Highly appreciate it. Yeah, of course, absolutely. And um, I wanna let Davida go. So I'm going to end this broadcast and say to those of you watching, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching and look for some introductions. Uh, with Zavida in the very new near future in the classroom. You'll find out when she's going to be broadcasting live. And please welcome her. Please share her videos. Please tell more people who you think would really benefit from her, her insight, her wisdom, and her kindness, and her mannerisms. Please invite other people. For those of you who are not already members of Amy Carrier's classroom, please join us. You can go to amycarriersclassroom.com and join us for free today. This is a free open source live learning community where you can learn career skills, leadership, um, cryptocurrency, self-empowerment, uh, anything that you need to learn that is not being taught in schools. That's pretty much what my commitment is. So, Join today. It's a worthwhile uh, place for you to be and spend your time if you're on Facebook. And it's a great way for you to learn and build a community from around the world. So go to amycarrierclassroom.com, follow Davida Ginter on Facebook as well, and stay tuned for more to come. If you want to learn more about other mentor teachers, uh, and watch any of my previous lessons, you can subscribe to my channel on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Amy Carrier Empowers. And um, otherwise, you'd be able to watch and share these broadcasts when they're shared in the classroom later. Davida, thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful evening in Israel. My pleasure. You too. Have a great and day. We will all, thank you so much. We will all be back together again soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.